series in top uh, this morning, and I would love to remind you that we have found ourselves to be an equipping church at Gunnersville First. God just blesses this church with the opportunity of, of bringing people to salvation, uh, gifting them with spiritual gifts, uh, raising some up into leadership, raising all up into some kind of service, often raising people up into pastoral leadership. We have a list of 10 or 12 or so people who have been called to ministry and gone out of this church into ministry in the North Alabama Conference in the past several, several years and are pastoring churches today and will be preaching in the pulpit this morning. And we celebrate the fact that God has called this church to be an equipping church. Every church is an equipping church, but God is just really working and moving uh, in and through this church in that capacity. So we want to know what it is to be equipped. For the past three Sundays, we have been reminded that in the early church, in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, that the disciples continue daily <clears throat> in the apostles' doctrine, which meant they're studying the Word, they're hearing the Word being taught, and things like that. In the past three Sundays, we've looked at the Apostles' Doctrine, and we use the Apostles' Creed and the, the subject matter of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit uh, to really, again, think about what it is to be uh, a disciple of Jesus Christ and what we believe uh, as Christians. Today, we're going to continue the sermon series equipped uh, with a sermon titled, Answer the Call. We're going back to... Acts chapter 6, verse 1 through 7, and see where at least three calls came to the early church. Could be more, should be more, but we're going to pick out three or look at three this morning that are very important and very common uh, to disciples of Jesus Christ and the local church. So, Acts chapter 6, verse number 1 through 7, New King James Version. Now, in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenist, which were the Greek-speaking Jews, because of their widows were neglected in the daily distribution of food. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and... Don't you hate it when that happens? Summoned the multitude of disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, uh, Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I was um, <clears throat> attending a funeral service a few years ago, <clears throat> we'll get there in a moment. <clears throat> I was attending a funeral sermon a, a few years ago in Fort Payne. I, I was not officiating the service. I was out in the congregation. It was a, a family member of one of my church members, and I was there to support the family. And I came in the, the back side of the chapel and went about a third of the way up and sat in a pew right next to the aisle and had some beautiful uh, music and some precious words were shared. And then the focus, the, the primary speaker took the podium to share some words. And about three or four or five minutes into his message, I heard <clears throat> Now, how many of you know that's not what you want to hear in the midst of a funeral? The good news was, it wasn't my phone. And the bad news was that it belonged to a lady about two rows up, sitting on the aisle end of the pew, and she refused to pick up her phone. 
It was in her pocketbook on the floor, and it rang, and it rang, and it rang. And I know everyone in the funeral home chapel was thinking what I was thinking. Answer the call. Now, not that I wanted her to pick the phone up and say, hello. Oh, yes, I'm just here in the middle of a funeral service. No, I wanted her to pick the phone up and swipe it, mute it, make it stop ringing. But on and on it rang. Voicemail did not kick in. And after about three minutes, out of frustration, she grabs up her pocketbook and throws it back down in the floor. And I thought, I sure am glad that wouldn't me. Do y'all ever have those moments? I sure am glad that wouldn't me. But the whole time I'm going, uh, saying to myself in, in my heart, in my mind, answer the call. Answer the call. I sometimes wonder how God calls to us. And God's heart and God's mind is saying, answer the call. I wonder when we look around and see in the hearts and lives of other people, God beginning to move and, and stir. Maybe God is calling them to salvation or calling them to ministry or calling them to something. And you know it. You just know that you know that you know that God is working in their heart and life and you're thinking to yourself, answer the call. It may be a call to discipleship. When we read that first verse of Acts chapter 6, it says the number of the disciples was multiplying. God was calling people to salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, no one comes to me lest the Father draws them. So the Word is being proclaimed and the Holy Spirit is moving and drawing people to discipleship and they answered the call. Multitudes of people were giving their hearts and lives to Jesus Christ. I remember the night I gave my heart and life to Jesus Christ and the the Baptist church my parents still attend. They'll probably be there today, as a matter of fact. My uncle was preaching, and, and I was uh, several rows back close to the wall uh, to the right of the pastor as he looks out in the congregation to his right hand. And, and, and I can't remember what the sermon was, but I remember God was calling, squeezing on my heart, and, and I stood there in the song of response, and I'm holding on to the pew in front of me, and if I could have put fingerprints on it they probably were there and I said God if you'll just let them sing one more verse I will go and they said the song director said on the third and I thought uh oh I've already told God I'd go so now I've got to be a person of my word and at 14 years old I went down to the altar I knelt down I prayed I gave my heart and life to Jesus and they've never been the same since I still remember that evening when God's call to discipleship came to my life and I hope and pray this morning that you can think of a time a season in your life that God's call to discipleship came to your life and you answered the call and I would encourage you this morning if you have not God is calling and I really encourage you to answer the call or maybe God has called and you have answered, but your relationship has not been what it could have been or should have been. And maybe you're at a point in your life now that God is calling you back to a renewed commitment. That's what I like about this. Remember your baptism service we're going to have down at the lake so that we can renew our commitments to God. Sometimes that's what the call is. You once walked close to the Father and now you've kind of strayed a little bit away and God is calling you back to a closer walk. I hope you're listening today because God is calling. He didn't stop with a call to discipleship. He went forward uh, with a call to service. That They looked out in the community and they saw there were people who were not being fed. Widows in the community who were not being a part of the Meals on Wheels program that was happening back in Peter and James's John, John's day in the early church. And, and people began to say, hey, some people are getting left out and and the apostle said, well, let's, let's pick out seven men full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom to appoint over this work and over this business of the church. And they did. 
Stephen and Philip and five others. It was noticeable that they were full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom and faith and, and God called them to service and they answered the call with a yes. I, I remember after Nona and I had married and we were attending Providence United Methodist Church, God placed a call on our lives for service and we answered the call and became the youth leaders at Providence United Methodist Church and did that for two or three years and wow what a challenge and what a blessing it was I found out what I wasn't called to youth ministry okay but but God called us to that in a season and we grew and learned because of that but I learned a lot of things one of which I'm not a youth minister and then God called me to another service in the church I was uh, nominated and put on the SPRC the staff parish relations committee and I never knew what fun could be until I was on the SPRC and we had trouble with the pastor and I thought oh my goodness and not only did they invite me to be on the SPRC at the ripe old age of about 25 they made me the chair so, Lord what have you gotten me into but you know what God blessed in that and that same pastor was the one I sat across the table from when I answered the call to ministry. See, God calls us to salvation, and we see that here in Acts chapter 6. God calls us to service, and again we see that here in Acts chapter 6 with the 7. But then God may also call us to a focused ministry. And God called me to pastoral ministry. Now let me tell you just a little bit about my call because God may be calling you to something. My call began as a deepening hunger for the Word of God. I could not learn enough about God. I read books about God, about spiritual formation. I read the Bible. I listened to people on the television, on the radio. I could not get enough of God. I just had a hunger for God like I never had in the past. And I would talk to people about their relationship with God and their experience of God. And the hunger inside of me was a driving, driving passion. So I did serve as youth leader, Nona and I did. I did serve on the SPRC as God continued to give me a deeper and deeper hunger for more of God. And then one day people began to say, my wife included, maybe God is calling you to ministry. You need to pray about that. And my first response was, I don't think so. Because I did not like to stand up in front of people and talk. I did that one speech in speech class in high school you have to do, and that's the only one I did. And I really, really uh, uh, detested the thought of having to take speech in college, which was one of the core requirements that I would have to do. But I want to tell you what, what God calls you to do, God equips you to do. So if God is calling you to something this morning, also know that He is also equipping you to fulfill that same call. So I prayed about that and I talked to different people about that and, and I just kept felt, feeling this deep sense of longing for more of God. We went to revival services. We, we did everything. But what God was calling me to was just a complete dedication of my heart and life and even my family to full-time pastoral ministry. That may not be what God is calling you to, but I, I encourage you to answer the call to discipleship, to service, and to focused ministry, if that be the case. And I remember the first time I stood in the pulpit. It was terrible. I spoke for about eight minutes. It didn't last very long. I'm not even sure if it made any sense. My knees were shaking and knocking and I was afraid. But I want to tell you what I felt at home even in the midst of such great discomfort. I was not comfortable up there, but I felt at home there. And when I finished preaching my first sermon, I knew that's what God was calling me to do. You may not be so lucky. You may step out there and go, okay, God, I think you're calling me to this. And you try it and go, oh, that, that's not it. Like I did with youth ministry. I encourage you, don't stop checking 
Don't stop listening. Don't stop pursuing the call that God has placed on your life. God, there, there is no happier place to be than in the center of God's will for your life. In discipleship, in service, in ministry. As I went out this morning into the congregation to shake hands and to greet people and to welcome people, my brother looked at me and he said, Wow, you sure are in a good mood today. I was smiling and laughing because I am in a good mood today. Because God has called me. And God has equipped me. And God has filled me with His Spirit and given me the gifts of His Spirit to fulfill the same call He's placed on my life. And guess what? If God has not already done that for you, God wants to. He may be calling you to some place in the church. He may be calling you to some place in the community. He may be calling you to be a, a, a business owner or a janitor or a nurse or a teacher or somebody working in the factory. God calls us to live in harmony with Him each and every day. The question today then is, have you answered the call? I went a year and a half saying no to God and giving God all the excuses I could think of why I could not, would not be an effective pastor. I remember one of them, I was just scared. God, I'm scared, I can't do that. Uh, another one was, Lord, you want me to preach and to teach to people who have walked with you longer than I've been alive? And he said, yes. And I said, I think you've got the wrong person. And God said, no, God never gave up on me. And I'm telling you, church, this morning, God's not going to give up on you. He's going to keep calling. He's going to keep calling. He's going to keep calling until we answer. And I would hate to know that I live my whole life Never answering God's call to me. I did have the opportunity to have a conversation with a dear pastor friend of mine one day. His name was Tom Ellis. He's died and gone on to be with the Lord now. And he said, Ricky, I'm glad you didn't do what I did. And I said, well, Brother Tom, what did you do? And he said, I ran from the call for 20 years. And it was the most miserable 20 years of my life. But once I answered the call, everything changed. And I've been the happiest man you would know from that point forward. Church, God calls us to discipleship. God calls us to service. God calls us to focused ministry. I hope and pray this morning you've answered the call. Amen? Amen.